Bonjour, it's up et bienvenue au quoi pour aujourd'hui. Alors, right guys, we're a week closer, but the message is still up there in black and white. You need to be working hard for the year 12 exams. Now, lockdown is absolutely perfect because this part of the year for year 12 is all about revision. We're now in year 12 at this time in May. Um, we had study leave, so we didn't have any lessons. We were just sent home to study. We had proper exams. We did AS levels back then, but we were just sent home to study, and it was all down to you and what you did. And my teachers, I, I didn't see them again until September, which I'm sure they were really happy about. Um, so this is what it's all about, guys. These lessons um, are just to test you and to test your revision and see how well your studying is going, and just to look at it module per module. And they are a test. So. If you haven't done or you don't do well in this lesson today, then this is a module you need to focus on. And you obviously need to focus more time on this than maybe another module that you will know well. So see it that way. These lessons are all about testing you to make sure you're ready. And that's what we're going to do today. So there's no more information apart from what I told you last lesson about the year 12 exams. They'll definitely happen. Um, I make these in advance, so maybe you'll know more about coming back to school by now. Who knows? But this is what you need to know. They're happening either across like a computer or coming to school to do them. And you guys are going to do really well on them if you're working hard and revising. These are the sort of provisional dates. They will happen in these weeks. So we're getting really close to this time now. So we're going to get revising today. Et pour la prochaine fois, I've given you the huge booklet with everything in it. Next time, you need to do module four, which is one of the modules you did with me. Do you remember right back in like October? Those are the days, guys. So music is what we're looking at. I know like, Will, you're a big fan of music. So have a little look through this. There's four hours of work here. Vocab, reading, listening, translator, translation. Complete that for next week. This is what you need to be doing. Four hours on your topic, a couple of hours on sector B, or two, three hours on that, and then all of Dr. Adebemi's work as well. I know it seems like a lot, but this is study time. You're at home. You've got to learn how to study to go for it. Alors mes petits, mais aujourd'hui on va faire un petit les examens, ce module toi qui est le travail, qui est un module difficile, je crois. Donc aujourd'hui c'est un contrôle de vue compétences sur le module 3, vous savez ce qu'il faut faire, mettez Mr. NS sur pause, et ici, j'ai choisi 8 verbes euh, très importants pour le module, est-ce que tu sais tous les verbes en anglais, mettez-moi sur pause, essayez de traduire les verbes, et quand tu es prêt, recommencez la vidéo, et je ferai euh, les réponses. Alors mes petits, right then, did you know all eight of these verbs that are all coming up today? They will potentially be in your year 12 exam. Donc, rémunérer, c'est comme l'anglais. If you remunerate someone, you pay them. So it's to be paid or to remunerate. Alors, jongler um, means to juggle something. Donc, jongler les enfants et le travail. To juggle your kids and your work, not literally. Concilier means to reconcile, but it can also be to juggle. So, jongler and uh, concilier. They might be used as synonyms today, how to like reconcile your home life with your work life and that sort of thing. Numéro 4, very important in France, faire la grève is to go on strike. The French love to strike um, and British people always moaning, oh the French are always striking. French have got better pensions, they work less, they have a greater number of holidays. England's got the fewest bank holidays in Europe. French has got, France has got the most bank holidays. Like, so striking works. Faire la grève, it happens in France and it gets results. Alors, durer, c'est comment dire, to last. Think of the word duration. For the duration of this flight, you can't smoke or whatever, or any flight. Durer, alors, ralentir. If you're driving in the motorway in France, which one day I hope you are, ralentir, you'll see this a lot on hills and in wet weather. It means to slow down. Think of the word in English to relent, which means to slow down or to ease off. And then you've also got the word, he's relentless, which means they don't stop, they don't slow down. It's non-stop pain. Ralentir. All comes from that verb, which means to slow down in English, uh, in French. <laughs> Empêcher is to prevent something. Uh, and then finalement, embaucher is to hire. Strange verb this, because it's really hard to make a link with your English mind to this verb. Embaucher is nothing to do with English. You've got to know it. It's the higher. All right, guys. Bon effort, si vous avez les vite. On va commencer avec un contrôle le vocabulaire. Mais avant de faire ça, je voulais faire quelque chose pour vous aider un peu. Parce que le vocabulaire aujourd'hui, c'est plus d'heures, je pense. Alors, donc, on commence avec uh, volley verbal. Alors, 
comment jouer ou comment faire cette activité à la maison toute seule. C'est plus difficile, mais ce n'est pas impossible. Hein. Il faut le faire toute seule. How are you? I put a timer on your phone and just time yourself. Put a stopwatch, a minuteur, and see like how quickly you can do this. Vous savez ce qu'il faut faire. Hein? <coughs> Excusez-moi, ici, vous avez le français. Ici, vous avez l'anglais. Il faut dire français, anglais, français, anglais, français, anglais aussi rapidement que possible. Je vous donne un exemple. Alors, l'exemple idéal. Prêt? Let me just get the first one. It's a funny one. All right, go ahead. Alors, dans le concours, ce que pas le direction, management, embûcher, et puis les tout à au chômage, on emploie, gérer le stress, le capital stress, l'intensification de travail, uh, the increase of work. Voilà, c'est si, got halfway. That's how fast I want you to be. La rentabilité, profitability. I'm so good at this. Put me on pause. Check, you know, these 15 words because they're coming up today. And then unpause me and then I'll count you down and then time yourself. All right. Allo, mes petits. Right, guys, so you should be ready to go. 3, 2, 1, put me on pause. Allez. Alors, bon effort, mes petits Adam. Alors, donc, cette fois, c'est exactement la même chose, mais j'ai changé l'anglais et le français. Cette fois, il faut compléter la phrase aussi. So, put your timers on zero. No prep for this. I'll give you an example. Unemployed au chômage, career path, like, le concord, to hire, on bûcher, management, la direction, to where I épuisé. So good. All right, I'm going to cut you down. Put me on pause. In, ta, de, un. Allez. Alors, bon effort, mes petits dons. Évidemment, vous savez un peu le vocabulaire, mais maintenant, on va faire un contrôle de vocabulaire. On your handout today, it's so actually on the last page, this vocab test to make it look neater. So, turn to the last page, or we'll scroll down to the last page and have a look. Vu, savez ce qu'il faut faire par 1, 2, 3, qu'est-ce que c'est en anglais? Par 4, c'est la seule, qu'est-ce que c'est en français? Attention, c'est en verbe prénoménal. Et par 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, il faut mettre le mot dans le bon espace. Attention à peu mettre, il faut faire quelque chose. Peut-être il faut conjuguer le verbe. Peut-être c'est dans un ton différent. Attention à peu mettre. Alors, le contrôle de vocabulaire est beaucoup plus difficile aujourd'hui que, que normalement. Donc, 10, c'est en bonne note aujourd'hui. Si tu gagnes 10, tu as fait bien. 14, très bien. 16 sur 16. Ce sera incroyable aujourd'hui parce que c'est de... Alors, 5 minutes, je pense, c'est assez. Mettez-moi ce pause. Quand tu recommences la vidéo, je vais faire euh, les réponses. Bon courage, mes petits. On y va. Alors, tu, si tu as recommencé la vidéo, euh, tu es prêt pour les réponses. Alors, le premier embûché, j'ai dit que ce n'est pas du tout similaire avec l'anglais. Donc, il faut le savoir. La reverse embûché, c'est... To hire somebody. Alors, non, numéro 2, être touché. J'accepterai to be touched, mais c'est plutôt to be affected by something. If you've been touched by something, you've been affected by it. Numéro 3, avantager, ça veut dire to advantage. Now, this is a strange verb, but you can say like positive discrimination advantages people who have been discriminated against or something like that. Avantager. It's a really funny verb, but it is one that could easily come up in this context. To relax oneself, there, there's, I mean, I can think of three ways to say this. I think I've gone for se reposer, mais j'accepterai aussi se détendre, to unwind oneself, and you can just put relaxer as well, they do use that in French. So all three of those, j'accepterai. If you've written all three, no bonus marks, suck it up. Alors, numéro 5, travailler à mi-temps. Or you could have tra travaillé à domicile, made à mieux, concilier, eu, jongler, le travail et la vie de famille. Alors, donc, deux possibilités pour chacun. This is why. So, the first choice says, working part-time. I love this. Look at this. Me helps to better juggle the work. And the, v, and the life of the family. So, working part-time helps me um, with my life and family. Or working at home helps me juggle um, working and family life. Even though I don't think you've got family, that's very good. Alors donc, les deux ici, deux possibilités pour chacun. Numéro 6. La chose la plus stressante pour moi, c'est l'intensification de travail. Il n'y a plus à faire qu'auparavant. Voilà, alors donc, cela veut dire en anglais, the thing the most stressful for me 
is the intensification of work and this is this idea that work's got more extreme and intense in the 60s and 70s work was a lot easier now a lot more is demanded with like emails you can email at any time uh, il y a plus à faire qu'auparavant veut dire there's more to do than before now you can use avant for before but auparavant is another way of saying it and it means before further back than avant but you don't need to know that auparavant is another way of saying before but it's further back in time and then there's this beautiful old french word which goes like this yadi <laughs> that's a j a d i s look how bad that's written j a d i s which means like even further back in time before alors numéro 7 je travaille à domicile u on pourrait dire je travaille à mi-temps ça m'aide à mieux concilier ou jongler le travail et la vie de famille. Voilà, c'est pretty similar to number five. Numéro 8. En France, la grève générale de 1936 avait permis l'obtention des congés payés. Alors, non, ici j'ai dit, I told you to be careful with permit, and this is it. In France, the general strike. Do you know what a general strike is from uh, Dr. Le Bermain? A general strike is when everyone's on strike. So usually when a, with a strike, it's just one set of workers. So like the train strike, all the trains stop. Teachers strike, all the schools are shut. But a general strike, absolutely everyone is out and the country is crippled. So for that day, no one works and the government and, and all the companies lose a lot of money, which don't seem that bad when we're in the middle of lockdown and we've been shut for, what, 35 days when I'm making this. But it is a big deal. Um, and with this general strike, they were fighting in it. Avait permis had permitted the gaining of congé payé. Now, you know the word vacances. Congé is just a synonym for vacances. It means holidays. So, avait permis. What tense is this in? Avait permis. You know this? This is the plus perfect tense, which we're going to have to use later today. Had gained paid holidays. You didn't have paid holidays before 1936, and they didn't want to give it to workers. They had to fight for it. Think about that. Et finalement, numéro 9, selon une enquête entière de femmes actives a déjà été victime de discrimination au travail. Ça veut dire en anglais. According to a survey, so you need to know this word for survey. Sondage is one way of saying it. Enquête is another. Entier. Now they use this all the time to trick you. There's two ones they use. The first one, which I'm going to write beautifully with my mouse, is la moitié. Oh, lovely. La moitié. It's like being at primary school again. That's meant to be a T. La moitié is another way of saying half or 50%. Entier is a third. You've got You've got to know this. Antia is a third. So according to the survey, a third of active women, this means working women, if you're active it means in the works in a sense, um, have already been victims to discrimination at work. Think about that, one in three. And then finally, if you got the extra challenge today, you've done really well. According to the survey, more than half of people, I imagine that should be, asked, believed Positive discrimination would not be a good thing. Oof, that's a horrible one. This is what you should have. Selon sondage ou selon enquête, plus qu'en moitié de personnes, ou plus que 50% de personnes interrogées estiment que, ou pensent que, ou disent que la discrimination positive ne serait pas une bonne chose. Guys, a phenomenal effort if you got that. Give yourself a mark out of 16. 10 will be a good mark today. If you've got under 10, you need to do a bit of work. I'd stop the lesson now. Don't move on to the next activities. Just look at your vocab for 10, 15 minutes. Maybe go and memorize for 10, 15 minutes and then come back and see what you can do. If you've got 10 or more, bon effort, on continue, mes petits. Hello, year 12. So with our vocabulary in place, let's move on to looking at some exam questions and, and, and pushing us out of that comfort zone. So the vocabulary will help you so much to understand this exam paper. It's crucial. There is going to be bits of French you don't know. So two things I want to remind you about. So when you take the year 12 exam, and obviously the A-level exam, you've got this in your head and you're ready for it. First off, answering in French. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't copy straight from the text. Just give me a simple answer. Uh, at the back of your massive revision pack um, with all the homeworks in it for each module, you've got this, giving you some useful expressions that you might be able to use to help you out. This is the maximum to do. Just a word, just a phrase will get you the mark. Keep it simple. Et voilà, donc vous savez ce qu'il faut faire pour l'examen des kits. Il y a les six choses qu'il faut faire ici. 
Et on commence avec getting the most out of the question paper. What we'll do now is we're going to do a listening task together. I've also included an extra challenge listening in this, so I'm not going to talk for it. I'll show you the transcript and the answers like last time, and I'll put the sound file on Frog for you, but like the other sound files on, um, on the PowerPoint. So listen to that. We'll all do that. If you want more practice, do the extra challenge one. It's slightly tougher. It's aimed at a slightly higher grade. Donc, ce qu'il faut faire maintenant, c'est 4 minutes pour se préparer. Donc, vous savez ce qu'il faut faire. Dans les 4 minutes, il faut lire toutes les questions. Il faut traduire les questions en anglais. Préparez-vous. Et peut-être tu veux deviner les, les, les mots, le vocabulaire lié qui, qui pourrait um, paraître pour vous aider un peu. When we listen, then remember, you're in control of the video today. So, pause, reflect, answer, check. Make sure you're doing this. Check your answers. Listen to it as many times as you can. Get into the habit of doing this and time yourself. So I'll give you just under 10 minutes for each activity. Let's talk through the first one. Et voilà. Donc aujourd'hui, on va faire une activité qui parle des footballeurs. Il faut répondre aux questions en français. Vous avez huit questions ici. Mettez-moi ce pause. Il faut traduire toutes les questions. Et quand tu recommences la vidéo, je vais traduire les phrases avec vue pour vous aider. Et puis, je vais euh, commencer l'enregistrement le, de son. Donc, bon courage. Mettez-moi ce pause. Vous avez 4 minutes. Ça fait 30 secondes par question. Essayez de traduire les questions. Bon courage. 4 minutes. On y va. Alors, right guys, if you've restarted me, um, you've prepared as much as you can for these eight, eight questions. Let's go through them and see what we've got. Donc, ah, qu'est-ce que les footballeurs font de leur argent d'après Natasha? This might have tricked you a bit, d'après. So if you say d'après moi, it means like according to me. It's just a little synonym for um, selon moi, selon Natasha. So what do footballers do with their money according to Natasha? If you didn't know d'après, like après is obviously after, but with the D apostrophe, it means according to you need to write that down that is something that's going to come up in your a-level exam 100 so what do footballers do with their money according to natasha one mark what do they spend on but for natasha dans quoi devrait-on investir les sommes d'argent gagnées par des footballeurs for natasha in what should um one invest the sums of money oh yeah so what should the money given to footballers be invested in so she might say footballers are paid too much you should be invested in health service or wages for nurses you know the arguments for this alors c'est quel est le salaire actuel de nor so this past this is a person nor what is the current salary remember actuel is a faux ami. It doesn't mean actual, it means at the moment. Actuellement is at the moment. Le salaire actuel is their current salary. So be careful with that. There might be a trick in the recording here. Their current salary. So they might say before they used to make this or they will make this next year, but the moment they make this, you need what they're making at the moment. Uh, des que fait Nord le soir? What does Nord do in the evenings? An E. Quelle profession permet de gagner, uh, here we go, 1035 cents, non, <laughs> non, 135 000 euros par mois, that's right, yeah, 1350,000, yeah, voilà, quelle profession permet de, de gagner 1035 000 par mois That is a lot of money. That's what I can't say. I can't believe you earn that much. Voilà. Tell you what, it ain't teaching. Alors, donc, F. Quel salaire Lilian compare-t-il? Voilà. So, uh, what salaries does Lilian compare? So, it would be the salaries of, like, doctors with nurses or something like that. G. Uh, combien les ministres touchent-ils par mois? How much do ministers get paid a month? Now, I think this means, like, political ministers, like, um... Like Secretary of Health and like that sort of thing, rather than like a church minister. Et H, donner un avantage propre à la fonction du ministre. Give an advantage of being a minister, or a real advantage, or, or their own advantage of being a minister. So, thinking about pay, this might be something like expenses, or you get a house, or you get a car, or something like that. So, it's always good to sort of assume and think well, what would a governmental minister get so guys that is what you've got the next slide will be starting the recording so good luck everyone 
restart this when you're ready and then you're in control of the recording. Bon courage, on y va. Les, Les écarts, écarts de, de salaire. salaire. Natacha, Natacha. Je, trouve je trouve ça aberrant, aberrant que les footballeurs soient payés autant. Que faire avec 2 millions d'euros par mois Alors oui, on peut acheter beaucoup de voitures de course et des bijoux, mais je trouve qu'on devrait redistribuer cet argent et l'investir dans des hôpitaux ou des écoles. Nour, je viens de passer le concours de professeur des écoles. Mon premier salaire est de 1700 euros par mois. Et après quelques années, je pourrai accéder à un salaire de 2000 euros par mois. C'est un salaire confortable, mais être professeur demande une préparation constante. Le soir, je prépare mes cours jusqu'à 11 heures du soir et j'ai aussi des corrections. Lilian, on parle on peu, peu des écarts, écarts de salaire. De salaire. Pourtant, Pourtant, quand, quand on, on se penche sur, sur la question, question on, on découvre, découvre des, des chiffres, chiffres incroyables. incroyables. Un PDG, PDG d'entreprise coté au CAC 40, 40 touche 135 000 euros, 000 euros par mois. mois. C'est 90, 90 fois plus que le que salaire moyen d'un ouvrier non qualifié. Elouane. Les ministres du gouvernement touchent un salaire moyen de 10 000 euros par mois, mais ils ont également de nombreux avantages. Ils ont droit à un logement de fonction, un accès gratuit au réseau ferroviaire de la SNCF et un quota de déplacement aérien. Ils ont aussi une voiture avec chauffeur. Hello, right guys, you're in charge of this, so if you want to go back, listen to different bits, go for it. When um, you're done, like, carry on past this and I'll go through the answers and show you the transcript. Alors mes petits, donc voilà, ici j'ai les transcriptions, donc si tu veux, mettez-moi ce pause et lisez ce que euh, les, les personnes différentes ont dit et puis recommence-moi et je vais euh, vous donner quelques réponses. Alors donc, right guys, so... First one then, what do footballers do with their money? This is Natasha. Alors oui, on peut acheter beaucoup de voitures de course et des bijoux, mais je trouve, etc. So what does she say they spend on? Voiture de course. So a course is like a track. So like race cars or sports cars. Et des bijoux is jewelry. So you can have either one of those two. Uh, either des voitures de course ou des bijoux. If you just put des voitures, I think they give you the mark for that. So well done. Alors donc. Uh, la deuxième, for Natasha, what should they do? On devrait, one ought to, uh, redistribute this money and invest it in hospitals or schools. Voilà, donc, um, dans des hôpitaux ou des écoles. You just need one of them to get the mark. Look how simple my answer is. Yeah, I haven't put, like, on devrait redistribuer. Don't need to do that. That's lifting. I might even lose the mark if I got that a bit wrong or mess it up. So just keep it simple. <laughs> you just need hospitals and schools. Alors, uh, c'est quel est le salaire actuel de Nour? Now I told you she'd do this. This is what she says here. After a few years, I could access or reach a salary of 2,000 euros a month. But my first salary, because she's just start, she's just passed her exam to be a teacher, which you have to do in France. My first salary is 1700 a month, so that's what you need. Uh, 1700 euros par mois. Alors, and then, que fait Nord le soir? Le soir, je prépare mes corps jusqu'à 11 heures du soir, et j'ai aussi des corrections. She's a teacher, so she prepares lessons and she does marking. She should be working harder at the weekend. You can't work till 11 o'clock in this job, but not that you care. There you go. So, prépare des corps or fait, faire des corrections to do marking. They just call it corrections in French. Voilà. Right, guys, four marks available for this. Et voilà, la deuxième partie, c'est ici, Lilian. Now, this was trickier because you needed to know a bit of key vocabulary but also just a bit of economics um so 
you'd have heard of, oh, what do they call them in English? Oh, I've forgotten. A uh, CEO of a company, which I, I don't even know what CEO uh, stands for, but I also don't know what PDG stands for, but it's the same thing. So these are the top people in a company, a CEO of a company. They're the ones in charge of it, and they get a ridiculous amount of money, particularly for people in the CAC40. Now, this is the French equivalent of the FTSE 100. Have you heard of the FTSE? So it's all the biggest companies in England are called the FTSE. What's the America's one as well? I can't remember. The NASDAQ. Yeah, like the NASDAQ ones. I don't know. This is all like a world that I hate. So the CAC count are the 40 biggest companies in France. So that would be like, um, like a Renault would be up there. Citron, all these massive French companies. So they make absolutely like millions, even billions a year. And if you're the boss of that, this is how much you could potentially get paid. Voilà. So the CDG de entreprise au CAC 40. All you need though is PDG de entreprise. So a CEO of certain companies. That's how I get that much money. It's not worth it though because you can't buy back your soul. All right. That's 90 times more. So he compares the CEO's salary with that of an ouvrier non qualifié a non-qualified worker. So I've put, il compare un PDG au CAC avec un ouvrier non-qualifié, mais tu pourrais écrire un PDG avec un ouvrier non-qualifié. That would be fine for the mark. Alors J, combien les ministres touchent-ils par mois? Les ministres du gouvernement touchent un salaire moyen, moyen de 10 000 euros par mois. So right, for some, isn't it? 10,000 euros a month. Et finalement, give another advantage of being a minister or working as a minister. You can have more than this. Look at this. Également de nombreux avantages. Ils ont le droit à un logement de fonction, un accès gratuit au réseau fer ferroviaire de la SNCF et un côté de déplacement aérien. So they got loads of stuff here. So what you can have is they get a house, a logement, déplacement, which is how you say travels, like you displace yourself by train or aeroplane. And then a car with a chauffeur. There's some really key things that you need to know. The SNCF is like the National Rail of France, so that means rails and trains. Um, uh, and then uh, déplacement aérien. Déplacement is how you say traveling about. You displace yourself. So you can use voyager, or you can use se. I'm getting the hang of this. Se déplacer. Beautiful. So these are two ways to say to move around or to travel. Ils ont aussi en voiture avec chauffeur. Easy. Right, guys. So that's your listening for today. There's also an extra challenge one. I'm just going to put the answers to that now. So you've got the file on frogs. If you want to move on to that, go for it. I'm going to go for the answers on the next slide. Et voilà. Right, guys. So here's our transcript for the first part of the extra challenge. And here's our answers. If you did extra challenge, put me on pause now. Have a little look. See if you've got them. And here's passage B. <laughs> La même chose encore une fois. Have a little read through and then see if you've got the answers here. Well done for doing the extra challenge. It will make a difference when it gets to the real deal. Alors mes petits, maintenant c'est l'activité de lecteur. Exactement le même avis ici pour les choses qu'il faut faire. Donc vous avez 4 minutes pour préparer vous pour lire les questions, pour analyser, pour traduire les questions. Et puis, euh, mettez un minuteur pour 9 minutes pour faire l'activité. Et voilà, donc ici, vous avez les questions pour la première activité aujourd'hui. Et j'ai souligné les verbes clés ici, ou les mots clés, donc je, je trouve difficile. Donc, mettez-moi ce poste. I'll translate all of these things after spend four or five minutes looking through these and make sure you know what the questions say. Remember the answers are in these questions here, so be really careful for this bit. Put me on pause, go for it. Hello, me petit, right guys, how did you get on with this? Now, all, I always think these find the right answer activities are so tough, so let's go through what you need to know. Donc, A, un an, an, in a year, les salariés français travaillent 239 heures en moins que les Britanniques, les salariés is a nice little tricky bit of vocabulary. They're saying workers or employers. So instead of ouvrier, they say French salaried people. If you earn a salary, you're a worker. So in a year, <coughs> French workers work 239 hours less 
than British workers. Is that true? You'll have to be really careful with this number here when you read the text. Uh, B. Les cadres passent plus de temps au travail que les professeurs. Ouais, les cadres. Voilà. This means middle managers. A cadre is a frame, like around a photo or around like a poster, a picture or like a piece of art. You'd have un cadre. This is a, like an expression to say middle managers. The people in the frame, they spend more time at work than teachers. What do you reckon? Uh, C. Le temps de travail hebdomadaire des Français ne peuvent pas excéder 35 heures depuis 2000. So here, you need to know the word hebdomadaire. We looked at this, we looked at les médias. You've got les quotidiennes, which are dailies, and les hebdomadaires, which are weeklies. So the time of weekly work of French people cannot exceed 35 hours since 2000. So a law came in. Is that law that you can't work more than 35 hours a week? Imagine that, a law like that in England. Um, D. Grâce au 35 heures. This is talking about thanks to the 35 hour law. Le taux de chômage en France a baissé de 10%. Le taux de chômage, the rate of unemployment. So the unemployment rate in, French, in France fell by 10%. E. More than 350,000 employees have been destroyed. Oh, sorry. More than 350,000 jobs have been destroyed by the 35, the law for 35 hours. F. Lionel Jospin n'a pas étient ses objectifs. So this verb comes from the verb étendre, which is to reach. So Lionel Jospin, I'm not going to say who he is because I think there's a question later on, hasn't reached his objectives. G. Plus de la moitié des Français a faim que les 35 heures ont rendu le bulleux plus facile. Here we go, I talked about this, we saw un tiers, and I'd say the other one they throw is en moitié, this means half. More than half of French people claim that, affirm that, the, 30, the rule for 35 hours has made their job easier. <coughs> Ash, French workers work more than German workers. Et e, in a general sense, the French work more than 35 hours a week. So, which of these are correct? This is really tough, see how you do. Voilà, donc, ici vous avez le texte, il faut choisir les phrases qui sont vraies. I'll give yourself 10 minutes to work through this. You know how tricky this is. Put me on pause now, see what you can do. Bon courage. Hello, mes petits, right guys, let's go through the answers. Which did you get? So, I've highlighted where to look for it. So, this is a tricky text, because look, the first answer for, the fir well, for A, the first bit you're looking for, is all the way at the bottom here. I hate it when they do that. It makes it really tough. It doesn't even make it like harder as in a challenge for your level of French. It just makes it longer for you to do. So A says, um, in a year, French workers work 239 hours less or fewer than the British uh, workers. So let's have a look. Comparé à leurs voisins européens. This word here means neighbours. Compared to the European neighbours, French workers work less. We knew that in a year, they spend 1,661 hours at work. British workers work 1,900 hours. Look at that. Look how many more hours we work. So, is that 239 hours less? Yes, it is. Imagine that. So, for the same jobs, for better conditions, French people work 239 hours less than British ones. Think how many days that is. Insane French workers have got it easy. All right. B, we said it was middle managers. Les cadres uh, passent plus de temps au travail que le professeur. So middle managers or people in middle management positions work more than teachers. So here we go. The time, the weekly work for middle managers reaches about 44 hours. As for teachers, they work 38 hours a week. In France, mate, I work 60 hours a week. So this one, uh, they work longer, is true as well. All right, C. The weekly work of French people doesn't exceed 35 hours. Now, this is where it gets tough. Okay, so the 35 hour week was introduced with the idea that you only work 35 hours a week. But actually, the truth was, it says here, it's also important to be precise or to, to like qualify that the 35 hours a week only is for a minority of French people. Most workers spend more time at work, so this is false. The 35-hour week is, is barely used for most jobs. 
and it was back in 2000 that is really not not a part of france at all but it's just the idea you know we talk about the differences between england and france whereas in britain you live to work whereas in france you work to live and that's the idea of 35 hours a week that's how much you'd work like teachers will glenfon will work 60 hours a week almost double what french teachers will work and that's just the cultural difference between britain and france they just have an easier more laid-back way to life than we do <coughs> Excuse me, D. Grâce aux 35 heures, le taux de chômage en France a baissé de 10%. Here it says, so having a 35 hour week has also participated to the growth of the unemployment rate, which hit the 10% barrier. So this is false. It hasn't gone down, it actually increased. E. More than 350,000 um, jobs have been destroyed by the 35. Let's have a Let's have a look. So more than 350,000 jobs have been destroyed. It says, in putting in this law, Lionel Jospin was hoping, see the tense there, this is uh, imperfect, was hoping to create this many jobs. But the former prime minister has actually been too ambitious. The 35 hour week allowed the creation of about 350,000 jobs in France. So this is false so it was about 350,000 not more than so Lionel Jospin n'a pas atteint ses objectifs bien sûr he hoped to create this he was too ambitious he only created under this many so this is correct and then G more than half of French workers say that the 35 hour week has made their work easier here's where it talks about um, à travailler de manière plus soutenue, ils sont 53% à déclarer qu'ils constatent une intensification de travail. So 53% have actually said, yes, they're working 35 hours, but actually their job is harder because they've got to do more in a less amount of time. Alors H, les salariés français travaillent plus que les Allemands. Les salariés, c'est down here. Obviously, this is false. German workers, French worker will work 1,661 hours, a German worker will work 1,847 hours a year, and then finally, in a general way, French people work more than 35 hours, this one is true, so here we go, it's just for the minority, la plupart, which is another way of saying the majority, the most part of workers spend more time at work, voila, right guys, I think that was tough today, a tough true and false, how many did you get, add up your marks. Et voilà, right, I'm going to very quickly go through these questions. So this one here is saying, um, what what is this law about? And then B, why has it led to an increase in unemployment? Um, C, why is the law, hasn't it been a success? Why wasn't it successful? I'll give three examples. D, what can you say? Why do people say that the 35 hour week is a myth? E, what is the situation of French workers versus other Europeans? And then F, who is Lionel Jospin? Now, this activity is definitely easier than the one you've just done. Think about what we've talked about, put me on pause, and then I'll go through the answers for this task. Alors, mes petits, les dans. Voilà, ici. Here's where our answers are. I've tried to rush through this text. It's just so big. Let's break it down. Let's pick out any vocabulary you didn't know. So, en quoi consiste la loi entendue par le gouvernement en français en 2000? Think about keeping your answer simple. If you copy all of this, you're not going to get the mark. You can't just lift from the text. So, keep it simple. Um, réduire le temps de travail à 35 heures. That's what you have to say. Réduire or oh, travailler 35 heures par uh, semaine. Keep your answer simple. That's all you need. So, why um, did it lead to a growth in unemployment? Um, this one's quite hard. Here we go. The cost of work had gone up. It discouraged people employing it. So, it says, when they reduced it, the idea was if, like, you can only work 35 hours, then someone's job might be two so you have to now employ two people because someone might be working almost 70 hours a week. So now you've employed someone else. So unemployment's going to go down. But it obviously didn't happen because when you have to employ more people, there's costs. You have to pay their pensions. You have to pay their national insurance. So it became 11% more expensive to get someone to do that job. 
So people didn't want to employ more people because it was more money to employ two people. It was better to just pay someone overtime. So this is what you need. Le cut de travail a augmenté or il a découragé les employeurs, discouraged um, people who employ people. That's actually a really tough uh, economics question. Alors c'est, pourquoi la loi sur le 35 heures n'est-elle pas uh, un succès? Three reasons why it wasn't successful. So this is what I've gone for. Moins des emplois étaient créés, less jobs were created than wanted, le taux de chômage a augmenté, unemployment rate went up, and il y avait une intensification de travail pour les Français, those people who were working had to work even harder. So, why are these nice ones? Why is the 35 hours a myth? Because la plupart des travailleurs travaillent plus, ou la majorité travaille plus. It doesn't exist for most French workers. Uh, uh, what is the situation of working people compared to other Europeans? In France, they work less. Les Français travaillent moins. That's all you need to get the mark. And then finalement, qui est Lionel Jospin? Says right at the top, le gouvernement dirigé par Lionel Jospin. So he is the prime minister, the former prime minister. Or he dirige le gouvernement. Um, so here we go. He, either he leads the government or he is l'ancien premier ministre, the former prime minister. That's what you need. So they do this quite often, right, in exams. The first few questions are really tough. So that one, that one, and that one are more straightforward to sort of get your marks up. Well done if you've got four on this. If you've got any more, I think you've done particularly well. Another tough task here. This is the sort of standard your year 12 exam will be like. And the skills you've used and the frustration you felt, that's what the exam is going to be like. So take your time, look at the questions, answer simply, and that's what it's all about. Alors mes petits, right guys, so to finish today, what we're going to be doing is looking at translation skills. Today we're going from French into English. We've done one English into French and I know how tough it was. French into English is easier, but remember our two rules, right? <clears throat> the mistakes people do is that they translate it word for word and in doing that you don't get the marks. Remember the two crucial things I want. I want you to translate the meaning of the text. So what does it actually mean? Not what it says word for word, what is the meaning and keep it true. Don't change the meaning. Make sure the meaning is there, but put it in proper, real, normal English. Alors donc, right guys, put me on pause. You need to have a go at this. Give yourself 10 minutes to translate from here to here. Look at the whole thing, yeah? So look, let me just do like word for word to show you what not to do. The discrimination at the work exists under different forms racial sexual physical you wouldn't say that at all in english change it up so discrimination at work exists under different forms um has different forms in yeah has different forms does exist under different forms yeah you could probably say that racial sexual physical i wouldn't say sexual i say racial discrimination um discrimination on the grounds of sex physical discrimination or maybe like discrimination towards people who have a disability you, you can change these words to make sure it sounds in english go for it so the bits i've highlighted are bits that you'll probably have to really look up and really change the english to have a little look put me on pause and i'll go through a model answer for them. Et voilà, right guys so let's go through the answers now you might have something slightly different to me, that's fine. If you're close, give yourself the mark. Going into English is so much easier. I hope you've appreciated that. And any vocabulary you haven't known, like ralentissement, we looked at the verb, la plafond de verre, just make a note of it because they do have a habit of repeating themselves, like the vocabulary that comes up in these translations. Right, let's do it. So the ideal answer would be here. Discrimination at work exists in different forms, racial, sexual, physical, or like you might want to change that. Um, un tiers des femmes actives en étaient victimes de discrimination. If you say a third of active women, that doesn't make any sense in English. Is a femme active is something you completely need to change. A third of working with women have been victims of discrimination at the hiring, so job discrimination or hiring discrimination or interview discrimination, um, or of a slowing down of progression professional no way change it or they've had their job progression slowed down 
because of maternity leave. La plafond de verre is how you say the glass ceiling. Empêche encore, further limits or limits further lots of women from gaining management posts in lots of businesses. Do you see how much you've got to change these sentences to make them English? That would be the perfect answer so far. So we're up to on a encore des efforts, which is this. So there is further to go. <clears throat> so the equality between men and women at work is more of a reality than a myth. Il ne faut pas non plus oublier que la discrimination sexuelle ou raciale existe aussi et cause des problèmes d'amant propre endommagé. This is a tough bit. So, one must not, not forget that sexual or racial discrimination also exists and damages the self, self-esteem and self-worth. Literally, amant propre is love for yourself. But you wouldn't say, it damages my love for myself. You'd say your self-esteem and or your self-worth. Um, of the victims who are mocked and bullied or you might put of the victims of mockery and bullying but I think that's old-fashioned English I'd say damages the self-worth uh, esteem and self-worth of the victims of bullying and mockery that is much better way a much better way to say it in English right that'd be the ideal answer don't worry if you haven't quite got this give yourself the mark if you're close Right guys, a really good effort here today. I think you've worked really hard and, and these module exams are tough. Remember this, just because we've done the module and I'm not testing you on it again, doesn't mean you won't need to revise it again before you get to the exam. This is the curve of forgetting you saw this in your GCSE days. You need to come back to this before the exam, otherwise you'll lose so much of it. So come back and revise and that will really stop this forgetting curve and you'll re remember to like, you'll have so much more of a memory for this exam. So make sure you come back, revise these concepts, revise this vocabulary, it will help you out. We've got to remember this in a year's time. So. That will do for today. It's another monster lesson. Well done for working so hard. You've done really well today. Any problems with your revision, email me, let me know, and I'll help you out. Well done for today, guys. Merci. Au revoir, mes petits.